we are back again with another video on speaker building and this video is going to be really cool this is part of the impulse audio build and we're going to be talking about box design and how we decided on the box and some of the things we're going to be doing with the box so that you understand what it takes to actually design a speaker from the ground up a lot of people think box design is just picking out the right number or the right volume in win isd but there's a little bit more that goes into it than just that so let's go ahead and talk about that right now. All right, guys, so when we talk about box design, obviously the volume is very important, and that's the first thing that you always want to figure out. Now, the volume you want to decide based on the frequency response that you want to get and also the size of the box you want to get. I was hoping to hit around 80 hertz. Why? Well, one is a THX standard. THX says that they want to get you right around 80 hertz to cross over your mains with your subwoofer and also your rears so that those speakers are capable of playing 80 hertz and above to 20,000 hertz. So I realized that this woofer can do that. Now, if you've been watching this series and you've been paying attention to Impulse Audio Channel, which I hope you have, he came out with some graphs. And some of those graphs included distortion. One of the things that you want to pay attention when you're building a speaker like this, just because the speaker can maybe cross over at 80 hertz, doesn't mean that it's not going to add distortion to it. And so if we take a look at the distortion graph that he shows us, you can see where this distortion is starting to occur. Now, the great thing is that's going to be right around tuning frequency, meaning that if we can tune just a little above that, that distortion is not going to be an issue. You can see why that is so important when you're building speakers. A lot of people don't factor that in. Now, if you don't factor that in, you're going to get that distortion in the speaker and it's not going to sound as good as it should. So make sure that when you're doing these, take those distortion measurements and see where that distortion is going to be problematic. Maybe you might want to tune your speaker up a little higher even though it says it can tune it a little bit lower. All right, now once we figured that out, we had to come up with a box design and this is where I love to use this website right here. This website, if you take a look at it, will give you a bunch of different box sizes in inches. Sorry for those of you who use metric, you will have to unfortunately convert that. But otherwise, it'll give you all the dimensions in inches and will tell you what the cubic volume is at the end. And that's where we came up with this particular box size. Now, if you notice, it's not very big, um, not very wide, and, and also not very deep. Now, why is that important? We had to, unfortunately, kind of make the box based off of not only the drivers, but also the height of the drivers. You see, the drivers themselves take up a lot of the front baffle. So when we throw the front baffle on here, you're gonna see that there's not much room on here. In fact, for a port, it's almost non-existent. Uh, not even for really a slot port, it's gonna be really hard to do. Uh, almost everything is taken up by a driver. So the height was kind of chosen for us already. I mean, we could have maybe made it a little bit taller or, or maybe even a little bit bigger, but really the height was kind of chosen for us. So that kind of gave us this width and depth, and that's where this is going to be important. Uh, first is because of port size, so let's talk about the port first of all. Uh, you, I already said the port placement is going to be pretty much problematic now. You need to, since this is going to be a rear speaker, we need to port in the front. Now, if we we're going to port in the back, this wouldn't be such a big deal, but we need to put it somewhere on this baffle. Now, we could do holes, like uh, I show you in this SketchUp diagram. I always check... Um, my builds in SketchUp before I actually build them to get an idea of what they're going to look like at the end. So you could have done holes, uh, just round cylinders and use some like three quarter inch, you know, tubing such as like PVC or something. The problem with that was the port noise was going to be too high. At least I felt like it would be and it looks silly. And so what we decided to do was a slot port, and this slot port is actually going to be in the form of a triangle. Now, if you're not familiar with how to build a triangle-shaped port or how to figure out the uh, tuning frequency of one, let me know. If there's enough people that want me to do a video on it, I'd be happy to do a video on that. It's actually really easy to figure out. So that was the only way that we could find that could reduce port noise and also look presentable. There's also another issue with this box size that we haven't talked about yet, so let's kind of go ahead and talk about that right now. 
And that's diffraction. Now, if you watched Ryan from Impulse Audio's video, you're gonna notice that we had an issue with the tweeter diffraction. I'd used this tweeter plenty of times, but I'd never tested it on a baffle quite so small. And unfortunately, we really have to worry about that diffraction. Well, the way to get rid of diffraction would be either make the box wider, which in this case, if we made it wider, it, it's really gonna mess up their other dimensions. Really, that wasn't going to be something that we could do. So the only other way that we can really get rid of diffraction is by chamfering by the tweeter. And by chamfering, we, we mean taking a chamfer you know, from here to here somewhere around the tweeter uh, and chamfer it back. In, in order to do that, we're going to need like a double front baffle. And that's great because the box is, is so small. So that's another thing that you have to think about when you're doing this box design is also that diffraction. Is that diffraction going to be an issue? And if it is, how are you going to get rid of it? Well, with us, we're going to try chamfer and that's going to hopefully at least minimize it. All right, now there's one other thing that we should really talk about with this box design, especially if you're going to be doing a rear speaker. Whenever I'm building speakers like this, I love to look at different types of binding posts and see what type of binding posts I could get. This build, I can't use that. Why can't I use that? Well, because this is going to be a rear speaker. Whenever you're doing a rear speaker like this, you're going to be thinking about using a terminal cup. The reason why you need a terminal cup is because if you hang this on the wall, you need the wire inset so that when you plug up the binding post, you can plug the wires in if you use banana plugs or screw it in if you don't so that it can sit flush against the wall. I hope this video kind of shows you how important this box design is and to think about some of the things. Now before we go, I want to give a special shout out to Joe and Tell. If you guys haven't noticed, my video is much improved over some of the other videos. At least I feel like it has. If you think so too, you should definitely give Joe and Tell a huge shout out on his channel. He went ahead and helped me with my video. I am going to be doing a collaboration with him too, a speaker project which will be coming up in the future. I think you guys will really, really like that. Now I'll leave links in the description to both Joe Intel and Impulse Audio right down there in the description. Make sure to check out both of their channels if you haven't already. All right, guys, thanks. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos when they come out, ring that bell, and that will give you instant notification to any new video that I have out. You can even be the first to comment. All right, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. See you next time.